Hi everyone and welcome back to Ask Finola How and I've missed you all <laughs> and I've actually missed doing these weekly live sessions. I find them really um, interesting to uh, kind of distill information consistently and it makes such a difference when you're consistent in your marketing and it's so interesting to distill you know when you're working in area in an area that you've worked in for years and years and you distill parts of what you know um consistently over a short period of time and i find that doing it this way means that i actually get to share much more of what i know and i also get to hear much more about what you've discovered what you've learned and how we can all help each other and kind of like this idea of a much more collaborative approach to sharing what we know. So today uh, I decided to theme this month being a planning month because we're getting to that point, especially when people come off holidays and they've had rest, they've had time to wind down because this is exactly what happened to me, that I've had time to wind down and to really kind of assess where I am in business and in life because they're inextricably linked, you know, one feeds the other and ultimately we want a better life. And if we have a better business that suits our life and that can feed our souls, feed our wallets and all that good stuff and help us accomplish the things we want to in life, then that's success, you know? So having had that lovely break to really reassess, I find myself making decisions about things I wanted to change and to bring myself back on track again and also to take the next leap forward. And it really stuck with me, this idea, especially for having worked with entrepreneurs over 25 plus years, seeing the difference in different types of entrepreneurs. And I wanted to ask you all the question, because this is really, really important. I wanted to ask you all the question of, do you see the end game? And the end game is where you want to take your business. And we've had several years, yeah, over the last number of years, where the focus has always been on the now and in this moment and what you can do in this moment and the actions that need to happen now. And this is really important because it is always about what actions you take to bring things to life. But we must not forget to articulate what the end game is. So I wanted to talk about that today. And I wanted to talk to you about the experience I have of two different types of entrepreneurs. Now, all entrepreneurs are essentially doers because they want to make things happen okay they want to achieve some sort of purpose they want to accomplish something um, and they often make that very tangible and commercial so if we start with the assumption that we are all doers as entrepreneurs i want to tell you that there's a difference between the visionary doer and the everyday doer now the visionary doer has their purpose upfront and personal it has it really really strongly in place the visionary doer dreams of the impossible and maps the path to get there. And the every, and these are rare, okay? And the everyday doer is the entrepreneur who can see the weeks and the months ahead, but often not much further than one to two years ahead. And that's good because you get things done. However, it doesn't drive a business to achieve anything greater than what can be only seen a year or two years ahead. And what I would like to share with you is that this is simply a change of mindset. You can become the visionary doer and flex that muscle of seeing what's possible and imagining what's possible and then move into everyday doer. But actually as visionary doer, you are able to accomplish that because you don't have the limits. So what I thought I'd talk to you about today is what are the steps that help you flex that visionary doer muscle and become more accustomed to achieving the impossible? That's really important. Becoming more accustomed to achieving the impossible. And how we become more accustomed to achieving the impossible is by actually seeing the impossible, seeing it very clearly, okay? So I've done eight steps for you, okay? That I want you to do to consider taking as actions today to change your mindset, 
to become much more visionary in the approach and what you imagine for the future of your business and your life, okay? So if I start from the top, and this is what we're trying to do is, we're wanting to make sure that we articulate our dream, we articulate the end game in such a way that we make it true, okay? So we have a couple of weeks to work on this planning piece. And so this first piece of the planning piece is going to be around articulating the dream in a very tangible, grounded way. Next week, we're gonna look at how do we take you from here to there, all right? So let's focus on the first piece, which is articulating the dream, okay? Step number one is one that you yawn at the minute I say it because I say it so often, but I want to reiterate it here. And this is that I want you to remember your purpose. So we start everything with purpose. Why are you here? What do you want to achieve? So write it down. It has to become something you're so used to talking about all the time. So I know that my purpose is to make it easier for entrepreneurs to succeed. So that everything I do is to make it easier for entrepreneurs to succeed. Any decision I make is about that. What is your purpose? Okay, articulate that. The second one. Now what I want you to do is, I want you to imagine yourself achieving that purpose, okay? And I mean in a very tangible way and you've got to make it really real. So we start usually with paper and I want you to think about this idea of saying, imagine what it would be like if, and you finish the sentence. So you've figured out that you have a dream, you've articulated a dream that you want to make it easier for entrepreneurs to succeed, or you want to heal the wounds experienced by so many people in such and such a space, or you want to create products that help people get fitter faster, or you want to, whatever it is, okay? Or you want to help sales teams be more effective by being more human, or you want to, you know what I mean? You've done your purpose, but that has to ground everything. Okay, so I want you to really bring this, what if that happened? What if you achieved that purpose? What would it look like? Because if we don't really feel what it looks like, then it'll just always be out there somewhere, out there in the ether, maybe possible of achieving, but still always aspirational, never arriving. This is why we've got to, see, got to make sure that you ground very strongly. What does the end game look like? or else it will only always be aspirational. So when you're standing in that place of having achieved your purpose, what is it that it looks like? Like, how are you, how can you know that you've done it? Have you uh, been interviewed by a hero of yours? What's the hero? Write it down. I'm interviewed by Gary Vaynerchuk because he's been so inspired by everything that I've achieved and he wants to learn from me. Mm. <laughs> Is that the impossible? Is that my imagination working? Yes, because we have no boundaries here. We have no limits here. We must be unencumbered by limits for our dreams and to make them true, okay? Maybe you have a hero in your profession or in what you do that you would love to have be interviewed by them because of everything you've accomplished. So I really want you to put yourself there, be even ridiculous in what you write, so that you can push yourself outside of your comfort zone because this people is possible and my experience is when we are unencumbered by our own kind of humility even are unencumbered by um conditioning we can achieve the impossible it's simply a mindset okay it is actually profoundly a mindset but simply a mindset so let's flex our muscles and become unencumbered by our own historical limits, okay? So write about, imagine if I was interviewed by my hero. Imagine if I was, uh, I had secured this client to work with me who's just, you know, totally out of my ball game, who's paying me X amount and it's just like crazy stuff. Write it down, because I want you to get used to the impossible, okay? So really play with that. Do it for 10 minutes without stopping. 10 minutes solid. Imagine if, dot, 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 okay? Imagine what it would be like if, okay? That's number two. Number three, I want you to engage 
all your senses in this, okay? I want you to call to mind what would it, as I remember all of the senses, what would it look like? What would it sound like? What would it taste like? What would it feel like? Is that all of them? Five of them. See, hear, smell. What would it smell like? What would it smell like to be interviewed by Gary Vaynerchuk? <laughs> what would it taste like to drink one of his wines? What would it, so what, how can I bring this to be a very guttural feeling that I really get it that that end game that I'm imagining for myself is experienced by all of my senses, okay? So that way we can bring it even more. And how you have evidence of this so that we don't stay in our heads and in writing is, and this is something I did just very recently and I haven't done it yet, is get yourself a box and pick up things like sights, sounds, smells, tastes that could, it could be, you know, the feel could be what's the scarf that you wear around your neck that it's beautiful and it's red and it feels really soft and it's, you know, what does that feel like? So this piece, how can you make that experience of your end game? What, how can you engage those senses? So what I actually did recently, because I'm doing this myself, because I'm reassessing where I am. So I went into a shop and I bought a box. Now I bought a big box. <laughs> so I bought a box and what I found was, it's a very interesting story. I found that I went in to buy a box so that I could have to collect things to actually help me feel all these things and taste all these things and smell all these things that will take me to this space. And even that is uh, an adventure in itself to find something that resonates, that feels like a beautiful piece, like a beautiful box that you're placing your future in and you're really anchoring it. Now, this is a, a really much used, uh, more developed version of your vision board. We're actually calling it, it's a vision box. It's sometimes called a manifestation box and it can just, help you feel like you've already gotten there. So I want you to try that out. And I'll let you know how I get on with my own manifestation box and I'll even put it live on Instagram. So, but what was interesting was I found my box, then I took the lid off, right, as I'm doing now, and I looked inside and I went, oh look, there's another box inside. And I just thought, I really like this. So I have many, many boxes inside my box. I like this idea that as I craft the next stage of my own growth, that it's going to take in many aspects of my life, but it's all contained in this one life. So that I can have a box that's dedicated to the business part of it. I can have a box that's dedicated to my relationship with my partner. I can have a box dedicated to my relationship with my son, my own health, all of these things. I'm playing with it. I'll let you know how I get on. Okay, so core message, call bring your senses all of your senses to bear when you are crafting the end game for yourself okay the next thing i want you to do is a little bit challenging okay after you've done all of that and you're pushing the envelope i've got to push you from a different angle so my everything that we've done here is about imagination future sight self taste all that kind of stuff the next thing i want you to do to really anchor this and ground it is i want you to write your death notice I want you to write the story of, today we say goodbye to name of your company and we want to celebrate how much good that this business has brought to the world. They have helped over 50,000 entrepreneurs achieve their potential and achieve success unencumbered by the traditional challenges and obstacles because they had a map to find their way. I mean, that's me just shooting the breeze with you. But wouldn't that be a wonderful thing to say about the death notice for this business of how we're making, helping people succeed? Play with that. Write the death notice of your business, okay? Next step I want you to do is date it. Date, and what I found myself writing here in the notes was, date the day the business lived, which is the first couple of exercise, and the day the business died because they're simultaneous. You achieve your purpose and you said goodbye because you fulfilled your mission, you fulfilled your purpose, date it. And the impact of this is we are saying very clearly when we will have achieved our purpose, okay? So that's what I'm asking you. Date the day 
Your business lived and died. Give yourself the death notice, write it, okay? And all that does is, well, it might sound like, oh, that's a very shocking thing to say, Finola. But instead, what it's doing is getting you to look at it from a different angle. And when you look at all of them together, you'll get a fuller, more deeply felt vision of your future. You become the visionary doer, okay? The next thing I want you to do is in this stage of really understanding what the end game is, I want you to measure it with money. I don't want you to shy, from, shy away from it. Very many entrepreneurs who are always, who stay in aspirational mode, don't attach a money monetary figure to this. Yes, there's more to life than money. You know, I talk about this all the time. I want a richer life, a more balanced life, but we've got to measure our success some part of our success in money. So put a figure on it so that you know that we have these other methods of measuring what the end game is of how many people we've helped, how many people we've served, but we also need to know what is the profitability of the company? How much money have you made? How many people have you helped? But measure it with money so that you don't lose track. Even if you were a charity, you'd have to measure it with money, okay? Do not shy from this. If you struggle with this, there's a great book called You're a Badass at Making Money by Jen Sincero. Read that. Move past old conditioning around money. We may need to talk about this in another session, but measure the end game with money. Okay, that is number six. My number seven for you, ask for the impossible. Okay, I want you to think of something that you think is completely outside of the realms of possibility. That perhaps that you are advising the Vatican on what color shoes they wear. What is out of the realms of possibility? Is it that you have your launch in New York, in the World Trade Center, in you know, the Tower One? What is it that can put you outside of your comfort zone outside of the realms of your conventional wisdom around what's possible. Dream beyond the usual, okay? Now, and my experience here is, of working with clients for over 25 years is, often it's the impossible that happens first. Imagine that. So if we have lots of these things that frame our end game, can you imagine what's possible here, okay? And the last thing I want to recommend to you as we really craft that end, end game and articulate that end game is I want you to commit to a monthly check-in to make sure that you do this. Too often when we talk about purpose, mission, vision in businesses, we don't check, are we on track? And I'm advocating and encouraging you to have a mechanism by which you either check in weekly, fortnightly or monthly with someone you trust someone who will cheer you on and support you and celebrate every single step you take to achieving your vision, to achieving your purpose. Commit to having a check-in. It's a cornerstone of this piece. Otherwise you will drift and it won't happen. And to support you in this, I invite you to join the free community for How Great Marketing Works on Facebook. And I'll do, you can see a link in the bio and join us and I will cheer you on, and so will everyone else, on helping you achieve your vision. So that's all I have for you today on Ask Finola How, and, <laughs> wow, well, on Ask Finola How, can you see the end game? But my closing statement I want to share with you now is, your dream needs to be articulated to be realized, okay? I want you to name it, flesh it out, and do it and join me live next week and we're going to talk about how to get from here to there there being what you've just worked on today with me and over the coming week and do join me in the facebook group the free facebook group 